Please welcome Shawnee and Sharif O'Neal. We have so much to talk about. Sharif, I see you healthy and handsome, so I know you're already <laughs> doing much better. Shawnee, I remember when this news broke, and I, it was yeah. one of the websites, and I'm like, wait a minute. This is a healthy kid. What are we talking about here? I, cannot, I can't even imagine what it was like when you first got the call that this was wrong with your baby. How did you learn? Um, I actually was out of town, and um, I got a call from the uh, trainer on the team, and he says, hey, um, could you come up to the school? And I'm like, well, I'm out of town town but is everything okay and he's like well Sharif is fine but we need to talk to you and Sharif and I'm I'm like okay you know and I knew that they had put a heart monitor on him I knew he had gone through a couple of tests but they you know it was nothing serious at the time so I got on a plane uh I remember landing in Los Angeles and I said well I don't get in until I don't know 8 p.m they said I don't care what time it is mm. come so then is that's when I knew this is not going to be good news if they're saying come to the school at, you know, 8, 39 o'clock. So Sharif and I, we went there. I'll never forget. We they, they brought us into this, like, conference room and sat us down and put hit the, a picture of his heart on the screen, which, if, you know, if you've seen any yeah. of that before, you don't know what you're looking yeah. at. You know, you're just, it's just... It's just a picture. Um, and they showed us that he had a right anomalous coronary artery, which sounded extremely foreign to me. Um, but bottom line was he either is going to have to have open heart surgery or he can choose to never play basketball again um, because the risk of his heart rate going up is what affects right. this this issue. Had he had um, any issues prior? To, oh, Sharif, we're talking about you like you're 15 years old. You're a grown right. man now, <laughs> by the way. So let me ask Sharif, the grown man here. Sharif, had you had any issues prior to this moment when they started monitoring you? Um, yeah, that's the whole reason why I was getting monitored in the first place. When I was about five or six when we were living in Miami, I had... Um, I had minor problems and I had to get something called like a heart ablation. But after that, I was always told that I was fine. So that's why I was like living like how I was living. Because if I would have known I wasn't fine, I don't know if basketball would have been the same. But Well, I'm sure your yeah, parents I, would not have let you play. Yeah, I'm sure your parents well, would not have. I said, I'm sure your parents would not have let you play how they known the risks um, that you were facing. So, Shawnee, so he was five when you found this out, that, that something minor um, was wrong, what, was it in the back of your mind as he started to play sports and especially started to play at such an aggressive level of sports? Well, no, because what, what happened at five and six was um, he would get accelerated heart rate sometimes, just randomly. So he had this heart ablation done, which was very minor, and they were like, oh, he's good. We, You know, the, the heart rate thing won't happen again. He's fine. But as a parent, we always had him monitored. We always did, uh, always took him to a cardiologist every year just to make sure. You know, it's just, you don't play with your kid's health and especially with his heart. So from then on, the rest of his life, he just constantly went to a cardiologist just like we got a pediatric check up every year and he was cleared every single year so we had no reason to ever feel like it was anything else wrong you know this was something totally different um and i even question now if the first procedure when he was five was even what maybe that's not even what he needed you know they just didn't do the correct tests i don't know and i don't want to point the finger but you know this many years later um, he didn't have any issues. And then when we talked to Sharif about it, you know, um, he was like, you know, I just kind of got used to feeling a little fatigued because he said he, he would look and just be like, sometimes I feel like I get tired quicker than my teammates, but he didn't think anything of it, you know, and they never mentioned it to, to any of us. Sharif, you weren't thinking anything of it, but obviously there came a point, um, where there was concern and that's why you were being monitored. Yeah, um, there was this. This is actually how it happened. Like I, the same feeling I I had when I was like about five, six years old. I would get that feeling like random every few years, and then I happened to get it one time when I had the heart monitor on. Like 
And then he always told me if I feel anything, just press the button. So I felt it during practice. I pressed the button because usually I would I would just ignore it. It would happen for a few seconds, but I pressed the button. And then about five days later is when they found something out. So I guess right when I pressed the button was like perfect timing to, for them to catch what was going on. How long, Sharif, were you in surgery, the open heart surgery you had? Um, I want to say it was about two, uh, two and a half hours. When they told you that this, you know, you're going to have open heart surgery, were you, is it crazy for me to ask this? Were you afraid? Or you're, you have all of this promise and now you're facing this with your family. Um, I did, honestly, that was my first surgery ever. So I didn't really know what was going to happen. Uh, like I didn't know whether to be sad or scared. I didn't know how it worked at first. Like when I was thinking of surgery, I thought you were awake during the hot, but didn't, when they said they put you to sleep, I, I kind of calmed down a little bit. But the only part that was scary was like the, the very like few seconds of when I was falling asleep and I knew it was about to happen. And then it just, I just woke up later and it was all done. But that was the only scary part about it. When Shawnee, that's the, the thing. And I was kind of dozing off. <laughs> that's the thing. Harry is 6'9". People would think he's a grown man, but he's a baby. He never even had surgery. He didn't even know no. what surgery, the, the procedure. How did you comfort him and yourself through this? You know, I... Sharif, I don't know how or where that, I mean, I knew he was strong. I knew Sharif has one of those, his personalities that you don't ever know what, if anything's wrong, right? He doesn't, you don't know whether he, you know when he's happy because he's smiling and all that, but if something's bothering him, he just, you just don't know. And here I am, I went into like this sunken place mm. once they told us, you know, he needed to have open heart surgery or not. Cause then I'm thinking, okay, if he doesn't have open heart surgery and chooses not to play basketball again, I'm going to be a nervous wreck of him just walking around every day, you know, worried about his heart rate. Mm -hmm. So either way, it's just going to be a devastating. It was a devastating moment, but I was like devastated and almost in a full depression from when they told us, which was September, he had surgery in December. So that gap in between, the emotions and everything that mm. that I'm sure Shaquille and went through as well as parents, it was just crazy. But Sharif kept this strength that was remarkable, actually. Mm. Like you would, he's about to have open heart surgery, and he's just like, wow. you know, well, this is what I want to do. I want to play, and if I gotta have open heart surgery, I gotta have. I just mm. don't think it clicked with him how serious this was. Wow. How are you now, Sharif? I know you, you're not at UCLA. You're at LSU, your father's alma mater, I guess. That's, a, again, all of this linking here. But how are you now? Uh, I feel great. You know, a few few months ago, I, I called my mom and I told her, you know, I was like, I finally played a full day of basketball without thinking about my heart. Because, you know, it was, it was kind of hard to, to continue to play, knowing what you went through. And, you know, now I, I wake up every day. I don't even think about it. You know, my, my coaches, my teammates, and... All the staff is real supporting of what I went through, and they always tell me every day, like, you're getting so much better, like, from what you've gone through to now is, like, we see the progress, and, like, I feel like a lot of people kind of expect the the process to just happen in a snap of a finger, but, you know, about two and a half years later, you know, I feel great, and you know, I just feel like it's just going to keep going uphill from here. Absolutely. It's all uphill from here. Well, we're happy to see you smiling and fully recovered and living your great life. Thank you so much. And Shawnee's going to stick around. We've got to talk about how she forged her own path, creating that hit franchise Basketball Wives. More with Shawnee O'Neill and the new season of Basketball Wives after the break. Welcome back. We've been talking with Shawnee O'Neal, creator and star of the hit franchise Basketball Wives, getting ready for another season. Shawnee, it's such a fascinating leap of faith you took with this show. Here you are at the time, you know, married to not just a basketball star, one of the most famous people in the world, but you had the confidence in yourself to say, I've got a brand of my own and I've got creativity of my own. What was that like? Was there a big moment in your life that's, that said, I'm bigger than someone's wife? I am a creative woman. 
Absolutely. I think that I always felt that way, but you know, with being married to him, it was, we were constantly on the move constantly. I just felt like I was constantly supporting him, which is fine, you know, which was fine. And I was a, a mom of five and mm -hmm. it was a lot. So I never really had the time. I had so many aspirations, so many dreams, so many goals mm -hmm. that, um, you know, just weren't supported in that lifestyle at the time. So when I, when we got a divorce, it was like, you know what, it's my time. Mm -hmm. I know I could do this. I know I have great ideas. Um, it's just a, you know, it's time for me to put myself first in that, in that aspect and, and have some type of career and have some type of, you know, legacy for my kids. Cause you know, their dad is who he is and he's amazing, but I want to be amazing too. Right. So, Which is so um, and you, you know, are it was that. just a drive that I always had. Yeah, one of those fascinating things about you and Shaq. I saw him in Atlanta right before the pandemic and he's like, you got to have Shawnee on the show. You guys were just, oh. yeah, he was great. He was such a champion of yours. And then at some point he said, you know, something about him one day getting married again. And I thought you're oh, not, yeah. you, you, he's been very supportive of your dating journey. You've been supportive of his. Was there a, a conversation about that? And, and he even said, what is it? He would attend your wedding or you would attend his if, if that ever happened. Yeah, I think we both support each other. Like, um, I used to tease him and be like, could you please hurry up and get a wife? And then you could stop, you know, randomly FaceTiming me and talking about your day. Like, I'm not, <laughs> like, get a girlfriend or something. I don't know. Um, so dang, <laughs> so we kind of teased each other in that way. But I think, you know, I think he wants to, he always tells me he wants to have more kids. So I'm like, well, Knock yourself out, cause uh, you know, have have a good time with that one. I think you you've pushed over that hill now, sir. But whatever, that's that's his business. Um, but he always does say he's like, you know, he supports me in a relationship. I support him. We have a great, you know, co-parenting relationship. Seriously, it took us a long time to get there. Don't get me, you know, don't get me wrong. It was not an easy journey, but. Once we got there, and I think we felt comfortable being honest with each mm -hmm. other and just sharing what was going on in our lives and our personal lives to a certain extent, because I think you know a lot of it is none of each other. It's none of our business. It's none of my business what he does. Same with him, and I think we both respect that. But if we get in relationships that we're going to go to that next level, we definitely will let each other know and you know and support it in the best way we can.